So much to unpack with the courts <laughs> and politics this week. Joining us now with Insight is WGN political analyst Paul List. Will there ever be a week where we go, hey, nothing happened this week? Uh, never. I never, can't see that. Never, All right. Never. Well, we've got to start with the mugshot that's making a lot of money. Yeah. And it, it's interesting because, you know, most people with a mugshot would sort of be embarrassed about that and not want it. But nobody markets better than former President Trump. So within minutes, uh, his mugshot, which, by the way, was clearly, and our viewers can see it now, that, that is a... He selected that pose, right? That That is not random. Oh. So he wanted that sort of defiant look. It is now available on T-shirts and mugs, $36 mm -hmm. for the T-shirt. Wow. And um, in fact, the the, the um, organization representing him, actually, I guess other people are putting it out too. And they mm -hmm. wrote him saying, you can't do that. We're going to sue We're you. Going but you. that is a public picture. Mm -hmm. So they don't oh. own that. They can't own that, which means anybody can put any. And I guarantee you, you'll see that shirt. Uh, you'll see that mug on shirts, both at the DNC and the RNC, <laughs> yeah, both using come next it year. Exactly. Purposes. Everybody can use it. Hey, let's talk about the attacks on the Fulton County DA, Fawny Willis. Um, first from Jim Jordan yeah. and the, uh, the House Judiciary Committee, and now we learn from Georgia Republicans. Tell us about uh, the threat there. So the, the Georgia Republican-led legislature passed a law um, last term which basically allows them to remove prosecutors. And it goes into effect, I think, in the next week or two. And it's all designed to go after her. And so we'll see what happens. The problem is before that law was passed, the Georgia Republican-controlled legislature basically passed another law that said that the prosecutors, like Bonnie Willis, are required to go after cases when there is probable cause. So her response to that will be, I'm doing what the law required me to do, the law that you all passed before you passed the one that mm. said you get to remove me from office. So that's a whole political firestorm that, that is coming up. The reality of it is, I have said this on the show before, I train Department of Justice, I've worked with prosecutors uh, and defense lawyers, but prosecutors, they just, they're just not political creatures. Um, I mean, she may be because she's, she's um, elected, uh, elected I mean, mm -hmm. but typically the frontline people, the people that do their job, then they are focused on the law and that is all they know. Hmm. Well, let's go back to those indictments. Sure. Among the many 19 yeah. was Mark Meadows. Of course, we know him as the former chief of staff. And earlier he tried to get out of those state charges and said, no, this has got to be in a federal court. What do you think is going to happen with that? And if he does get federal charges, uh, open the door for former President Trump. So, Jackie, that hearing is Monday. So we, yeah. we may not know Monday, but I'll tell you what's interesting about it. That is considered an evidentiary hearing. And what that means is it isn't just lawyers arguing. There will be testimony. Brad Raffensperger from Georgia is going to testify. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, how will Mark Meadows people, what are they going to put on? Is he going to take the stand? I doubt it. So how, what is the response going to be? His argument is, I'm a federal employee. I don't belong in state court. That's why I want to be, the term is removed to the, to the the federal court. Uh, what doesn't happen is it's still the state court, the state laws of Georgia that apply. It's not federal laws. He still can't be uh, pardoned by a president. It's still a state proceeding. It's just in a federal court. Why do it? Because the jury pool is larger rather than just sort of that Atlanta area uh, that the state court reaches. The federal court reaches a much broader area. So more likely to have more rural, more Trump supporters, so to speak, in that group. Mm -hmm. But what he's after is if he can get it to federal court, then he just says, hey, I'm just doing my job. Just like you brought me into federal court, I'm just being the assistant to the president, and therefore, you must dismiss these charges. That's a long shot. Don't think that's going to happen. But I will say, of the three or four who are trying to get their cases removed, he actually has the best chance. I don't oh. think the arguments will be strong really? enough, but he's got the best chance to get it it's removed. It's going to feel like a mini trial come Monday. It, well, it? in many ways, it is. It's a yeah. slight preview rate of what's oh, coming. Okay. Uh, let's talk about Jack Smith's D.C. investigation into January. Six Trump's lawyers are asking for a 2026 right. uh, court proceeding, a trial to begin there. Smith wants January. How is that going to affect the race and, and the multiple investigations that we've been talking about for many, many weeks? Ask me on Monday, because <laughs> that hearing is also oh. Monday. Oh, my. And so, yeah, so Judge Shutkin, in that case, um, what we can see, we don't know for sure, nobody knows, but she seems pretty heck-bent on wanting to get that case heard sooner than later. So while you're right, whereas um, the prosecution has said, we want to go January 2nd of 2024, Trump responds with, now give us a few years on this. Um, this is not a case where the judge is going to split the baby which is what judges might want to do. Mm -hmm. She's not going to do that. And so here I anticipate a date. It won't be the January date, but it won't surprise me if she goes to a date much closer to January than even 
outside 2024. She's going to get this case tried, I believe, uh, before the election. That's what she's asking. Like your Wisdom of Solomon reference there. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that is what yeah, some judges right. do. And by mm -hmm. the way, in the Georgia case, we may see that begin. That might have been a question coming. But we may have seen that begin actually in October of this year mm -hmm. because there was one, Ken Cheesebro, and now Sidney Powell. Uh, remember the one who's going to release the Kraken? Well, now mm -hmm. she wants the case Kraken, just to use the line. <laughs> she wants to move. So now there are a couple people saying, I want the Speedy Trial Act and vote. I want my case in October. It raises all sorts of questions like, well, wait, does everybody go in October? Funny Willis says, yeah, we all should. Um, or does it postpone? And what happens on Monday in terms of the removal of the case, that can just make everything moot because the judge can say, I'm allowing the removal and you're all coming up mm -hmm. here. And so their motions are mood. It's just a lot of confusion right now. We'll have some clarity on Monday. You know, we can't ignore the very big case locally to Mates. Oh, yeah. That was a pretty big deal and that the jury uh, found him, convicted him of uh, perjury and uh, obstruction. obstruction of justice within five hours. And I believe he had a chance to get out of this with some sort of plea deal. And the judge said to him, you can take the deal, but if you lie in your testimony, we're coming down on you. And it's exactly what happened. He lied. They proved it. Uh, and now instead of, I don't know what the deal might have been, maybe, I don't know, a couple of years perhaps. Okay. Now he faces 20 years. So the real question left there is, will he now turn on Mike Madigan, who, mm. whose trial is next, next year? year. And, mm. and by the way, if he does, he's still going to prison because he put the system through the, the ringer, so to speak. But but he may not get the 20 or even close to it. So if he turns, it may help him. We'll see. We'll see how far loyalty goes. It got him here, his loyalty to Mike Madigan. 20 for obstruction and I think five for perjury. Yeah, so well, he yeah, sees a yeah. lot more. Right, yeah. he could. He won't get that much time, but right. that's right. what he faces. Sunday show, right. Paul. Hey, so we're going to have, um, actually, Pat Brady, former prosecutor, joins us on election night. Uh, will be here, and he's also head of, the former head of the Republican Party. We're going to talk about the MAPES trial and also some of this Trump stuff. And Congressman Sean Kasten is going to tell us why the um, Inflation Reduction Act, remember that one? It has nothing to do with reducing inflation inflation, but it does have a lot to do with climate, and that's his world, and mm -hmm. so he's going to explain uh, all of what's going on to assist in the climate area. So kind of an interesting show on Sunday morning. I'll call and wake you up. We'll see you Sunday. <laughs> you we'll it. be up.